bass oracle. Hey everyone, I'm the Saxophone Oracle. This week we're talking about playing bass lines on our saxophones. I'm going to show you in four easy steps how you can start creating your own improvised great sounding bass lines. Why bass lines on saxophone? Because bass lines are very much the same thing as an improvised bebop line or eighth note line, just they go by half as fast, right? A bass line is in quarter notes rather than eighth notes, but the same principles apply. And if we learn how to create our own and improvise our own melodic bass lines, it's the perfect way for the beginner or intermediate improviser to start getting their feet wet, understanding the principles of voice leading and line construction. Constructing an improvised line, whether it's quarter notes or eighth notes, it all follows the principles of voice leading. If you're not familiar with it, I did two in-depth videos on voice leading. The first one is an overview. The second one goes in-depth on how it's applied in jazz. I encourage you to check it out over here. And we're going to look a little bit at this today as we learn how to create our own bass lines. The exercise we're looking at today has four rules to it or four parameters. And if you follow these four rules, you will quite quickly be able to effectively, confidently, and consistently improvise your own melodic bass lines. Here are the four rules, and they're really, really simple. First rule, only play quarter notes. So no eighth notes, no skip beats, just one note per beat. Rule number two, whenever the chord changes, so on beat one generally of every bar, you must play the root. Whenever the chord changes, the root goes on beat one. Third rule, this deals with beat three of the bar. On beat three of the bar, you must play a chord tone. It is simple, but very important. On beat one, we play the root. On beat three, on beat three, it must be a chord tone. And that, again, goes back to the principles of voice leading. Beats one and beats three are our strong harmonic beats. That's where we show and make the chord sound, by playing strong chord tones on beats one and three. Now the fourth and final rule, this is the one where we have the most leeway of expression, creativity. It deals with beats two and beats four. So on beat two or beat four, we have three options. We can either play a scale degree passing tone, we can approach beat one or beat three with a semitone approach tone, so approaching from a semitone below or a semitone above, or we can play another chord tone. So rule number four on beats two and four, three options. Scale passing tone, semitone approach tone, or another chord tone. Four simple rules that if you follow them, you will very quickly be playing great improvised bass lines. Before you start screaming at YouTube or calling the jazz police on me, I'm not saying that these are the four rules you must follow to create the greatest bass lines. Certainly, if you listen to Ray Brown, Slam Stewart, Oscar Pettiford, Charles Mingus, Dave Holland, whoever it is, they aren't following these four rules. There's all kinds of things you can do to make great sounding bass lines. What I'm saying is that the beginner or intermediate improviser who has never done this before, if you follow these four rules, very quickly you will be able to improvise great sounding melodic bass lines. Now I'm going to demonstrate the exercise for you. I'm going to do my very best to follow the four rules I've given you to the T. I'm going to demonstrate it over the song All the Things You Are. When I'm done, I'm going to transcribe the lines I've played and put them up on the website so you can download the PDF, check it out, see how I've done it. But this is to show you the results you can get if you follow these four simple rules. Thank you. 
there you have it. That's what it sounds like if you follow those four rules. And it's really great because if you and a friend, perhaps, are both into doing this exercise and get good at this, then you can start playing duets together. You no longer need a duet book. You can pass the bass line back and forth while each of you take turns at the melody or improvising your own solos. It's fantastic. And again, if you can do this consistently, you're well on your way to playing great improvised eighth note or bebop lines. I'm going to do one more quick demonstration just to illustrate my point when I mentioned that bass lines are basically the same thing as improvised eighth note lines. So let's imagine for a moment, we're going to take the same song, All the Things You Are, but rather than the chords changing every beat, we're going to put them every two beats. And I'll play the exact same thing. I mean, I'm, I'm improvising, so it may not be exact, but I'm going to follow the exact same principles, playing eighth notes. So essentially, I'm going to do the exact same thing twice as fast. And what does it sound like? I don't know how that sounded to you, but to me it sounds a lot like improvised bebop lines or jazz lines. Of course, when we're improvising, we're not going to be following these four rules. But again, if we start by working with these four rules on quarter note bass lines, we're well on our way to playing great improvised jazz solos. I'm the Saxophone Oracle. This week we're talking about improvising bass lines on our saxophones. I hope you found the information helpful. I hope you found it useful. If you try it at home, please leave a comment or shoot me an email. Any questions, I love to hear from you and possibly I can address them in any future videos. As always, thank you for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. That really helps this channel out. I wish you a great week. Happy practicing. See you next Tuesday. Bye-bye.